Well hi and welcome back to my YouTube channel today. It's a beautiful day in Adelaide, a little bit overcast, just the right temperature. A far cry from what we had a few days ago when we had the, the horrible bushfires. So, what are we doing today? A little bit of camcorder history today and I'm going to be talking about the Panasonic G3 VHSC camcorder. But a little bit of, and I'll show it to you shortly, and a little bit of the uh, the backstory as to why I have this camera and why I'm going to talk about it. My dad, Glenn Thompson, was in many ways a, a mentor to me, um, and in particular he influenced me a lot with photography, both film and and um, uh, both stills and and uh, movies, and uh, also he was the one that got me into bird watching originally. So. Uh, Apart from all the other many things, he he um, he meant a lot to me and um, uh, has been a big influence. Unfortunately, Dad died when he was 70 of cancer. He'd only been retired for five years and in that time he had uh, triple bypass surgery and then he had cancer. Um, but he was very resourceful and still did many things in that time while he was fighting cancer. Anyway, he was always into all the latest technology. He was a jack of all trades. He was... Um, a pilot in the Second World War, he was a um, self-taught motor mechanic, carpenter, woodworker, metal worker, he, you name it, he did it all. I'm going to put a bit of a link about who my dad was and show some of his photographies uh, to one of my blog posts um, in the, in the um, notes below this, this video today. However, just before he died, he, um, he'd been in hospital and he decided he wanted to come home. And we brought him home. He lasted about a week at home before he died. And he um, he loved the idea of videos that were coming out. I think, I don't know whether I already had a VHS video camera at the time. I might have. But anyway, he saw this Panasonic G3 VHS-C camcorder had just come out on the market. And he thought he would like one of those. And he bought it. And he thought it was the best thing since sliced bread. And... Uh, Sadly, though, he only got to use um, use it for very briefly. He shot about a minute and a half of footage on it, uh, or capture on it, and that was pretty sad. He had it set up in the back room so he could take video of birds out the back window, but it never ever really eventuated. Anyway, the camera got passed down through the family, and uh, there's been many um, things that have been captured on it. The, the uh, grandchildren, plus myself and my brothers, I think we've all used it at different times and uh, even a wedding was shot on it and uh, there is a, a film or a video already on on this um, YouTube channel about wakeboarding I'm going to put the link here but that was actually filmed on this camera so what else can I tell you I have here a, uh, a camcorder user magazine from the UK this came out in when was this August 1991 and uh, my dad passed away in 1992 so it was hot off the press then I used to get heaps of magazines on photography both local Australian ones and overseas ones and this on the front here is featuring the very camera we're going to be talking about you can see it there and there is a review in here of it which I'll just quickly show you There we go, look at that. Hang on, I'll just put that down. Living Colour. It's really interesting, the preamble to this says, Are they a gimmick or are they a worthwhile addition to casual usership camcorders? Ian McQuillan looks at the Panasonic G3, the second British camera with a colour viewfinder. The first one that came out with a colour viewfinder was a sharp camcorder and this one had a color viewfinder which back then was pretty unique all camcorders even the first one I had they all had black um, just monochrome viewfinders and they were regarding this as um, a bit of a gimmick at the time what you do get if you take the Panasonic G2 and add a color viewfinder you get the Panasonic G3 boom boom hmm must have lost something in the translation. Anyway, after a relatively lean 1990, 
Panasonic has once again been proving it's a company with an eye on the, on the main video graphic chance. I'm not quite sure what that is. And they were trying to compete with everyone else, as they still do. Color, it says here, Color Electronic Viewfinders, CEVF they were called then, are rare to the tune of just two, the other model being Sharp's pioneering VLC7950, although Canon will shortly have a version of the A10 palm corner, blessed with tricolour pixels. Colour viewing, therefore, is a straight choice between Sharp and Panasonic. There you go. Generally, it goes on to say there's a lot of inf information in here. If anyone wanted me to photocopy this whole article and make a PDF and email it to you, I could, if you're interested. And I do have the actual manual here too, the Panasonic manual. So if anyone has picked up one of these uh, cameras, I can always do a, a scan of that and send you a PDF of that. <coughs> Don't worry, I'm coming to show you the camera in a minute. So, um, it says here, generally it's better to see in colour than black and white. Wow, whoopee doo. We see in colour, watch TV and films in colour, so there's no reason why we shouldn't see through our camcorder in colour too. What a revelation is that? The users at whom the G3 is targeted aren't worried about critical manual focus. As a mass market budget model, the G3 has other criteria to fulfil. This is where the camcorder's second main selling point comes into play, the AV wide scope. As you can see on this picture here, the girl has up to her eye there a thing that fits onto the viewfinder, and it's called a wide scope viewer. I'll show it to you in a minute. Anyway, what else does it say in the end here? I won't go through too much more of that other than showing you the camera now so this is it it's a beautiful little camera it was all plastic got a light that comes with it my first full-size VHS camcorder Panasonic had a light that came with it too it was very useful on here the uh, the, the wind sockers obviously come off of that so I don't know you could always make one to put on there to, to fix it there you go <coughs> usual lens cap sitting on the front what's happened now goodness I've pulled off the uh, the filter as well oh no that's just a that's just an attachment thing I'll fix that later anyway <laughs> wrecking the camera as I go anyway there you go now these batteries in here these ones are all um, had it they don't work any well I, I tried to charge one up yesterday and it didn't seem to work I don't think any of them will be able to be charged anymore I could try it later on but to um, to actually um, you can actually get replacement uh, batteries for these in Australia anyway for about $40 I think they are or, or depending on whether you get a big one like this or a flatter one you know anywhere from about $28 to, to $35 or $40 or something when I got this out the other day I couldn't remember how you got the batteries on and off but you actually there's a little um, button here on the side called battery eject and you actually push that and then you slide the thing sideways it goes in and out sideways so that's side sideways so that's how that comes in and off I'm going to uh, plug in some power to it because the batteries won't work but I do have a power adapter and a battery charger here that comes with it <coughs> and um, I'll just plug that in Got our power plugged in from the power point. So um, the way to turn these cameras on is there's a little switch up here. See there? And it says uh, operate. So we just push it to the right. And there should be, now there's a little light up there indicating that it's powered up. Okay. The tricky thing with this camera is that... Um, I hadn't used it for so long and I'd forgotten how to use it and I couldn't work out how to get the cassettes in it. These are the, the cassettes, the VHSC cassettes that go in it. <clears throat> we've got a number of these of recordings that we've made years ago. I couldn't remember how to get it in because there's a compartment here on the side 
which is where it goes in, and I couldn't work out how to get it out. And then I realised that if you push that back 180 degrees, the viewfinder, like that, and then you press this button here, <coughs> out it comes, or it should do. Come on. What's going on here? Maybe I've got to have it in that spot. <clears throat> oh, there it is. It's come out now. Okay, so that's how the battery comes out. <coughs> and to actually put the cassette in, it goes in, I've got to have a look each time. I can see where the big wheel, there's a big wheel and a small wheel there. So it goes in like that. See, that's what it looks like. Cassette. It goes in <coughs> like this. Just turn it around that way. Goes in there like that. Push it in, and we just clamp it down. And that whoops until it clicks. So it's engaged now. Then you bring this back here, and um, on the top here. Most of these camcorders had a. Um, you could either have it in the the playback mode or the or the camera recording mode. This here at the moment is set in the playback mode, um, and you can see down here it says camera or uh, VTR. So to put it in the camera mode, you point it up there, and then you've got your camera controls, some of the controls there. <coughs> you've got an on-off button there to to engage it. You've got a zoom, rocker zoom up here. There's no manual zoom on this, which is a bit unfortunate. <coughs> you've got some connections down here. You've got connections for a remote and also for connecting up to your TV. And also this is for connecting up this little socket here. You also use this. This is the what they were talking about, the wide scope attachment. So it basically um, gives you a little bit different view than what you're doing through the viewfinder here and um, so to actually put this wide scope on here and you can actually focus use focus the viewfinder to suit your own eyesight through that ring there but if you take this off it comes off like that a bit like a bayonet mount and you get this this is the uh, and this has got a built-in loudspeaker and a volume control and um, it's quite Unique, really. <coughs> Excuse me. So, to put this on, I think this is how we do it. I did it yesterday. Okay. There you are. It's on. Now, we have a... Um, a cord here like so, it comes off the, the bottom of that and we plug that in down there whoa what's going on there I must have that too close to the because uh, this has got a built in microphone in it I'll turn the sound down, I think that's what it is it's too close to the, the speaker on here I think or something anyway, I'm not sure anyway, so you might be able to see that You've got this viewfinder there, and it gives you a bit wider view, so you can actually sort of walk along like you do with the flip-out screens. You know, you don't—I didn't have flip-out screens back in these days, so I could actually walk along like this and looking down at the viewfinder, and just looking from a from from the top down and 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 operate the camera quite well. So there you go. And it still looks good through the colour viewfinder. I can't really show that to you here at the moment. Don't think I can anyway. Maybe. Let's have a look and see. Don't know whether you can see that or not. Anyway, let's just put this back here. <clears throat> okay, so. There you go. That's how that works. I'll just take that off for the moment. And we'll put this other viewfinder back on. 
bear with me. Just a bayonet mount. Okay, so I can't really show you this operating because everything seems to be working, although I'm not sure about the light. I'm not sure whether that's supposed to work, whether you can turn that on or not. But I've got the, um, if I put this into the VTR mode and I tr attempt to play back, I can see that there's a tape in the, in the camera um, and it's on pause and it's on single play. You can record long play and short play. These tapes only go for 45 minutes. Uh, that are in here, um, but I can see that uh, if I was to press this here, this playback button, where is it? Play button to see if it's going to play the tape. The, the, the screen's just going dead and I can hear a wrinkling noise like something's not working and something's... and what I suspect has happened, we'll just stop this now. Remember how to stop it. Stop. That says stop there. So I just stopped it. So um, what I think has happened is that the rubber band has broken in the um, in the uh, like it's a, a rubber pulley system that works these spins these around. And I think that's what's happened. And uh, therefore, even I haven't damaged the tape because when I take this tape out. When that comes out, I can pull that out, and there's no that the tape hasn't been caught up or anything like that. So there you go. I can't. I'll just show you the um, these tapes are basically the same width as an ordinary VHS tape, but they're just a small compact version of it. They're shorter, and the way you actually played these back in a full-size VHS, a VTR video tape recorder was with one of these adapters and I can still play all these tapes in our VHS um, player that we've got at home here and the way you do that's what it looks like note this little thing here on the side There's, you've got to have this operates on batteries you've got to put an AA battery in it so to actually open up and put this tape in here you can see that little uh, you just slide that across the top there and that pops open like that and then the tape goes in once again you're looking for the big hole and the round hole the tape just goes in Wait a minute, I'll show you tape goes in the top like that push it down shut it and this little thing went back in again now so that's all oh, then then you just play it in the um, the video tape recorder and it plays back that tape perfectly as if it was a full-size VHS tape so that's a little bit about that. Um, what else can I tell you? I've put, I'm going to put a link below also to a, um, an original TV ad I found on YouTube um, to, uh, extolling the, the beauties of this camera way back then. Um, I don't think I'm ever going to sell this camera. It's got too much sentimental value. It's interesting though, it says on here, worldwide sponsor the 1992 Olympic Games. And so it shows you how how new a camera it was. And that 1992 was the year my dad died. So that's a reminder of that as well. So um, it's a beautiful little camera. And um, we got a lot of good use out of it. The various members of the family. It's still sitting here. We've still got a few accessories that go with it. And um, I should probably try and get it going one day. But uh, I've got so many repair jobs around here with different cameras that... Uh, yeah, it's uh, probably never going to happen. But, who knows? I might end up buying a new battery for it one day and getting it going, just for the sake of it. So, there you go. Thanks for uh, for watching today. Don't um, I hope that's been interesting for you, a bit of camcorder history. I mean, camcorders now, I mean, we have them built into our digital SLRs. And the ones that are still standalone camcorders, they of course have the flip out colour screens, most of them. And uh, we just accept that as normal these days. But it wasn't normal back then. So there you go. <coughs> Excuse me. Thanks for watching. And uh, don't forget to like if you like this video. And subscribe if you wish. Uh, I'm not too worried whether you do or you don't. But anyway, 
Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time. Happy shooting, I should say. See ya.